The views expressed by Paul during this podcast are his alone and do not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or positions of his employer. The views expressed by Jason. Wait, dude, really? This is what you want me to read? Okay. The views expressed by Jason are his alone and frequently do not necessarily reflect reality. His opinions are often annoying, scattershot in their application, and can resemble more of a Virginia Woolf short story than a cohesive argument. He is currently undergoing therapy and rewatching Westworld Season 3 to resolve his storytelling issues. Hey, Jason. Hey, Paul. How you doing? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Got my coffee. I'm ready to go. This is going to be a good one. I have, Well, I, it's definitely going to be a good one because we're going to start it off with an amazing joke. Probably one of the best bad, dad, dad jokes. So how can you tell how heavy a red hot chili pepper is? Now, I know you're a music fan, so that's why I'm asking you. I don't know, Paul. Give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. Way, get it? W e i g h. Way. <laughs> that you have to admit that was amazing. And welcome to season two of F Sides, <laughs> the annoyingly award lacking number one cybersecurity podcast according to Muscle Car Poetry Magazine, and the most money losing not for profit venture this side of starting an airline. Yes, and that and actually that's interesting that you know starting an airline. There's always metrics around airlines, and I think today's conversation. You and I've chatted about this in the past. We've had some good, good conversations, spirited conversations, because I think we think about it a little bit differently. But in the end, we always get to the same place, and and that's around metrics, right? And I've seen so many books about metrics, security metrics, and you know how you can measure to the nth degree. What's your what's your initial thoughts when somebody says the word, "Hey, I want some metrics." <laughs> well, I think the fact that we're money losing is a metric. That's called a balance sheet. <laughs> true, true. And a profit loss statement <laughs> and a but, negative cat we, we are with a negative cash flow. Those are all metrics. All metrics to measure health of a business or health of a venture. You know, it's metrics are actually um a fascinating thing because you know, you see so much out there on you know, again, how to do things, how to measure things. And most of the books I've read talk about the scientific detail going in depth on metrics. Oh. And, and, yeah, and then, if it, everybody in cyber, there's it's called the green book. If you know in cyber that those of you that are in it, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know what we're talking about. And it's like considered the Bible of cybersecurity metrics. But it is like it's a thesis in statistics. And I swear there's some physics and some <laughs> some calculus in it. Yeah, it's just it's all math. Yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of stuff in there. And right. It, there's there's a lot of good things to think about in, in those books, those very large tomes of, hey, here's metrics and here's why you should have quantitative metrics to the nth degree. But metrics, the way I look at them, are about telling a story, right? So you can have 5,000 metrics, but if they don't tell an interesting, meaningful, actionable story, they don't matter, right? So let me give you an example. Um, you know, I, I actually share this with people um, on my team and, and with others, right? There's this um, great Lego graphic that's out there. I saw it on LinkedIn. It, I didn't create it. Somebody else did. But it was a great way to talk about how to tell a story and you know, it has data, which is just a, a big jumble of Legos, all the different colors and all the different shapes. And then the second one is um, sorted, right? So it shows all the Legos, but sorted by color. And then it has a range um, where they're all like kind of evenly spaced out and put together by the different shapes. And then visualized, you know, actually shows them stacked in, in their colors and so forth. And then the story actually is where it builds something like a house. And unfortunately, most of the metrics that I see never quite get to the um, story, right? They tell you the visualize, they'll put together all this stuff, but they don't tell you why it matters. And and one one thing, and Jason, I'd be curious what your thoughts are, you know, let's put this in security terms, right? If I tell you there's, I'll make up a number, um, 20,000 vulnerabilities, and you don't know cybersecurity and you're not in IT, that sounds bad, right? That sounds like it's it could be a problem. But if you don't contextualize it, you're not helping the the person receiving the information understand, oh, those 20,000, well, we're counting one vulnerability on one system as one. So we have 10,000 systems, we have this one vulnerability, uh, you know, and it's actually really just two vulnerabilities across all these systems, and it's a low vulnerability um, and it, a, a low risk vulnerability, right? When you start to give that more information, the metrics start to make sense. And again, unfortunately, most of the metrics I see are just numbers. What's your thoughts? Um, that was a lot. 
I yes. live and breathe metrics. I am. I definitely consider myself a data driven CISO. Like uh, I, I live and breathe by. There's two great quotes. Lord Kelvin, um, the guy that invented the fair, the Kelvin system of uh, mm. measurement. Yeah, metrics way to measure how hot is the sun kelvin knows uh he says if you if you can't measure it you cannot improve it very famous quote i think everybody's heard that at some point in life drucker mm-hmm. peter drucker a famous management consultant still around like not still around he might have passed away that's a good i gotta google that in a minute but a famous famous management consultant says if you can't measure it you can't manage it absolutely i live and breathe by that when i come to the cybersecurity program and I don't see measurements. I don't know how I can measure my efficacy. I don't can't measure how well how well am I doing something. You know, I, the last thing I want to do in cybersecurity, and this yeah, I think this is business too, is you don't want to have to go ask people, hey, are we running antivirus? <laughs> yeah. I want to be able to measure if we're running antivirus or not. Are we running? A, huh, do we have a firewall enabled on our systems? Uh, yeah, we do. Great. Mm-hmm. Show me the measurement. Show me the metric. Go get it. Go measure it. Look at it. You know, to me, a metric is almost evidence that something does or doesn't exist and how well it might or might not exist. So I'm a big fan of metrics. But well, so how do you clarify that then? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Metrics on their own uh, don't mean you have to have context. Some metrics are really mm-hmm. good at explaining context. I'm a big fan of ratios. Ratios are uh, basically a percentage of, you know, it's a it's a nominator denominator or it's a calculation of multiple numbers put into one. I'll give an example for those of you listening that might understand the difference between you say someone's, hey, Microsoft stock price is at one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, let's buy. That actually is useless. The stock price is useless. The only reason it might be important to you is because you have context to what it was last week or a month ago or when you first bought it. So you might be happy about that. But if you take that context of history out of it. There's a much better ratio used in the stock market called EPS. EPS is a ratio metric. It takes net income minus depreciation divided by the total outstanding shares. And it gives you this number to say this is the valuation earning per share of the company. And that's a really good metric that is an industry standard that in and of itself is telling a story versus just stock price. Well, let's get to security again, right? So, um, so let's get off this uh, boring yeah. finance. Who cares yeah, about finance? Whatever. Let's talk about something <laughs> interesting like security. So, you know, for security, there's different different audiences want different information, right? You just said you're a, a data driven CISO. Um, mm-hmm. And you understanding, you know, do we have 100% of the systems have supported antivirus with an updated engine, right? Um, you know, that's important to you. Would but you know unfortunately what I'll see is that CISOs will push up that same information that's meaningful to them up to higher levels. Well, really a higher level, um, you know, like a board member or an executive manager only wants to know, hey, is our anti? Do we have antivirus? Is it or actually really is our antivirus program working right? And then figuring out the metrics for that and so forth. What's well, how what's your experience been with that? Um, I've experienced that exact thing and I would, you know, for the, there, there's data at different levels and points, you know, look at it like, um, a manufacturing fl- Let's say you're an automaker and, and I got to get out of cyber cause I don't think most people are going to understand it. So I'm going to use, let's use the automotive industry as an example. Okay. You know, I can get behind we'll, car analogies. Go ahead. You know, when you're manufacturing a car, there are multiple metrics that are sitting on that manufacturing floor, a number of and ons, the number of times that the screw went in or didn't come out of this, putting this thing together. I guarantee the CEO of Toyota doesn't know those metrics and doesn't get presented those metrics. Mm-hmm. But those metrics roll up into a much larger strategic picture, kind of like you said, is like, is the overall, is our manufacturing floor effective? Mm-hmm. You know, how yeah. effective is it? Those metrics all round up into this greater, bigger metric that probably a CEO is looking at. But it doesn't mean that that metric's useless. It doesn't mean that metric, like you have to have the, mm-hmm. in fact, there's this other idea is that there's this thing called in business KPIs, key process, is it key performance indicators, key performance key, key indicators. Performance indicators yeah. It's a strategic objective measurement of the company, but you can't have those, in my opinion, without underlying metrics. Those metrics make up KPIs. I mean, a KPO, for example, Southwest is very well known for their strategy and how they can map strategy down to an individual employee level, say Mm -hmm. a flight attendant uh, checking in people at the gate. How many check-ins did I have per how many this leads up to higher strategic KPIs of making sure that they have the fastest plane turnaround time. Because the faster you get a plane in the air, the more money you make because it's an asset. When you have it sitting on the ground, you're not making money. You want to have these really fast turnarounds. 
So they take this simple metric of the very low level employee that, to be honest, nobody up above is going to care. Hey, how fast did that flight attendant get that person checked in, for example? Mm -hmm. But that leads into this higher KPI of like, hey, fast turnaround. And that fast turnaround leads to this very high level CEO is, hey, are we making, you know, how cost effective are our operations? That's a great way to look at it because I, I 100% agree, right? That unfortunately, you know, we, we see metrics as just numbers being pushed up and up the chain, which, you know, very detailed numbers. And then, and you see that in, again, some of the books that talk about security metrics and so forth, like, okay, you need to have X, Y. And then on LinkedIn or other social media, you'll see, you know, here's the 15 key things you should be reporting up. And I look at those and think, you know, exactly like you said, like the CEO doesn't need to know uh how many um you know of the screws were properly put in how many were stripped right how many broke during the engine putting the engine into the car but if they have um poor quality you know assurance or they're getting a lot of returns because the engine fell out then the ceo starts to care and, and focuses in and dives in that's why you need the deeper number so you know the thing i would the thing i would always look at with metrics is, is this tell a story and is it meaningful to my audience? Right. Again, yeah, like at, you said, at ahead. whatever level you're at, if you're the line manager for that, you know, automotive production facility and you're managing that line for that piece, it absolutely is critical to you. Mm -hmm. But make sure that, you know, your team members, if they're giving you the metric, they're telling you your story that you need to hear. And then you yeah. as a manager, you may go up to your level and go, okay, I don't need to do this, but I need to go tell this story. Hey, for example, I need more, <laughs> one of the stories, the common story in cybersecurity, I need more money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Help, give me Why? the money. Why do you need show more money? Show me the money. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Find the metric that tells that story and shows like, hey, why do I need the money? Oh, well, this is risk is increasing or our productivity is decreasing or we can't keep up with threats. And that's the story you'd want to tell based on what you need out of it. Yeah. Or okay, are, we so doing a good, are we doing a good job? Which is a which is a positive story. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Hey, we here's here's what we rolled out last year. We rolled out a fish training program and our fish prone percentage, meaning how many people of mm -hmm. what percentage of our company are suckers and fall for fish sucker. I saw what I did there. Oh. Are, are a sucker fish. <laughs> are a sucker fish. That was hey, okay. That was almost as good as my joke. Go you ahead. brought us into the dad joke territory, I did. I man. Touche. You yeah, and I think yours is better than mine. But so who's a sucker uh, fish? What percentage of our population is like, hey, you know, we spent, hey, see, so, you know, here, here's why I want to express to, you know, why it was such a good investment. Because look, our, you know, our fish prone mm -hmm. percentage dropped from this to this and shows that we got value out of the product and value out of the initiative. Yeah. And as you mature, you want to show more information because, I mean, everybody, most everybody clicks on a fish accidentally, right? It happens, right? So you would want to show, hey, here's never. the first time. I've yeah, never everybody, done that. Anybody who says they ever, never have, ever, I'm very suspicious. Ever, 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 um, ever, ever. Because because I think most of us have, except for Jason. Well, that, that was the time. You, you, th that one time you got hacked. I clicked yeah. on your email. <laughs> well, but what I, you know, the way the additional information is here's how many people have clicked twice, right? Because that starts to tell a different story. Like, Hey, mm -hmm. no accidents happen, but if we have twice in a year or four times in a year, okay, maybe this is a training issue or an individual, like whatever, right? You could start to tell more interesting information. He's Paul just brought up another great point. Look at that. I, I love it when I talk to you about, about you to the third person, when you're I the only that. one on the call. I do appreciate that. Cool. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul just mentioned something very interesting too, is the idea of a point in time metric versus continuous mm -hmm. measurement. I know there's a big movement in industry in general, in in corporations to go to more of a continuous metric measurement than a single point in time. What Paul just highlighted was once a year, a lot of places do fish testing once a year or maybe twice a year, maybe three times a year. Okay, did we hit? And there's a big movement to do continuous testing and continuous efficacy checks. And that's what I prefer. I prefer at a yeah. minimum, you know, go grab that metric daily. How is my, for example, you know, are we running antivirus? I can't believe I even said antivirus. Antivirus is dead for anyone who's listening. That's like so 1998. But if you're running endpoint, this endpoint protection solution on your laptops, uh, I want to go check daily. I want that number to be like, hey, what are we at today? Wow, why did 10 just drop off the plate? Oh, uh, an update came out that, you know, accidentally disabled it. So that continuous yeah. metric, continuous reporting is critical as well. Okay, so it's easy for you and I to sit here and pontificate about you should have metrics. The hard part is if you have nothing or what you have is just not good, right? And you have to start from scratch. Where would you start, Jason? And how would you start? How do you mean? You mean for cybersecurity? 
Uh, we could do cybersecurity. You could use car, whatever. Just, you know, again, we see all these like big books about here's metrics and here's the 15,000 metrics you should put in. And oh, if you're not, you're clearly inadequate. Like not everyone works like that. What if you're at a small company, you just started out and you just need to measure something, right? And we could talk so about most, security or not. Yeah, I, I would start, well, I, for one, I start with my team. Let's assume you at least have a couple people on your team. And if they're not mm-hmm. directly on your team, you have a couple people that are involved in security at your company, whether they be at the executive level or they're at, you know, IT service desk, like do, working on laptops. It could be anybody. You get everybody in a room and you just brainstorm it. You say, all right, well, what what's our program look like? I start with that. What are we doing? And then as a team, come together and go, how can we measure that? What are our possible ways that we can go and picture and determine how good we're doing something? Because it, another another tidbit for non-cybersecurity practitioners, there's a very famous framework how we measure the effectiveness of a cybersecurity program. It's called the Capability and Maturity Model. It was not invented in cyber. It was invented in Six Sigma. But this idea of measurement of when you have a process, like the Toyota manufacturing floor, Zero means you got a bunch of, you know, uh, grasshoppers running around, don't know what they're doing. And it's, you're not even doing, you're not even making anything. You're basically going nowhere. Five ad is hoc. this, mm-hmm. yes, ad hoc at best. At best. One is like ad hoc, actually. Yeah. Zero is you don't even know how to spell ad hoc. Five <laughs> is you, you have this, inc- like you're the most mature organization. And you know what it takes to get the four and five? Is it measured is number four. And the fifth level is, is it managed? Right. So that whole measurement is part of that process of maturity. So you sit down and you go, okay, what are we doing and how well are we doing it? And how can we go measure how well? And then the next thing is you want to report that. That's that management piece. You know, you're actually doing things with those metrics besides gathering. So I get everybody in a room and I say, let's go through this and let's brainstorm and let's figure it out. Well, you said, you, you said something that I, I have not seen happen in a lot of security programs. And I, I like that you said it because one of the first things I do is, I go and um, talk to the team about what services do we provide? And that mm-hmm. seems like it's always a new concept. It's like, what services? We're security. It's like, no, no, there's specific things we do. And the reason I do that is because sometimes you'll get pushed stuff that isn't related to your job, but because it has the word security surrounding it, you know, it's, it's now become your job. But if you clarify what your services are, like, hey, we provide firewall services. We provide endpoint detection services, right? And what does that mean? Well, we make sure the system stays up. We make sure it's it's kept updated. We have a input to incident response. You have to define your services. And yes, it's a pain and a lot of people struggle with it. But even to start with, once you identify your services, then you can identify the metrics to say, am I delivering this service in a manner that meets what the organization is looking for, yep. and is it successful? That, but you that have works to define yourself. That works for accounting. That works for human resources. Yep. That works for anything. And coming up with those metrics, it's not rocket science. You don't need to go read a stupid green book like Paul and I have read. <laughs> <laughs> you can just get in a room and be like, "Oh, okay, here's some ways to do it." And you know, it's, it for one thing. The other, okay, I'm going to go on a tangent. Another Loomis tangent. Whoa, whoa, that those I'm, never happen. Hold on, this that is that wow. don't let automation slow you down from capturing your metric. I get oh. that a lot. I get people going, oh, we got to automate. We got to automate. But it's going to take you six months to automate when like oh, all it really takes God. is it's, it's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a maturity level. Start with a spreadsheet, track a number once a month and have somebody go in and look at it. That's all, you know, start there. And then absolutely you can automate. But sometimes the, the path and the vision for automation blocks just getting the simple metric into a spreadsheet. I love that statement because sometimes, especially in IT, we focus so much on what's the problem, what, what's, how do we automate it as fast as possible? And I always say, um, and I heard this from, um, Gene Kim, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, in the security world know him, but we were doing a presentation once and he brought this up and I've remembered this for about 15 years now is, um, technology only makes a bad process bad faster. Right. And, you know, automation only makes a bad process bad faster. Get your process in order. Right. And the other thing that I've always talked about um, that's very important is don't conform your processes and your um, what you do to a technology. Make sure the technology supports your processes. Yes. Right. So, I, I mean, yes. we could I yes. could spend like 30 minutes talking about that <laughs> because I am very passionate about that. But, hey, I, I do want to ask. Is because it maybe this is just my view is I don't often see people in IT or security talking about what they do from a service perspective. Now they'll talk about ITSM, right? Which is supposed to be service management, but I don't know if a lot of people understand that it's really about defining your services 
And it it just seems like a foreign concept. Is that something that you've seen within IT? Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't go down that services path, I, but it's probably synonymous. How I do it is I go, what do we do? What, what would you services. say yeah. you do you here? Do yeah, here. that's services. <laughs> I, say, I say, what do you do here? What do we do? Oh, yeah. we do the following things. If you count those as services, and absolutely, I, yeah, I get where that can be seen as a service. So I don't necessarily yeah. use that vocabulary or that language, but I understand. Okay, yeah, so agree. let's do it the office it's, space way. What are I we know doing? You love- and now, and now, how do we measure how well we do it? Yeah, and I, I know you love office space. I do too, by the way. <laughs> um, so let's just we'll call it the what do you, what would you say the you, you do, do here measurements? Here. Yeah, yes. because. Again, that's a very because sometimes when you put this fancy language around it, it feels out of out of reach. Yeah, so and yes, you start it, it, by you start by cataloging that, and that's that's actually a miss for a lot of corp for a lot of companies, right? You just assume mm-hmm. security does, and nobody documents it. Nobody takes the time to write that down. When I come yeah. into new companies, and I'll be take over a program, be like, okay, show me what you do. Oh, um, well, we had this this presentation we gave out a couple years ago. You know, it's outdated. Like, you got to keep track. Yeah, you should be always yeah. tracking. And then that absolutely feeds into those metrics because you want to see how well you're way, doing it. If you're in security and you haven't done this, you will often find yourself assigned extra stuff that has nothing to do with your team. And it actually takes away from your core mission, right? So, you know, if you do this, this actually helps you from an audit perspective, from a management um, time perspective, from a setting customer expectation perspective. Just figure out what you do, document it, share and say, hey, is this what you think we do? And if everyone's in agreement, your life just became significantly easier. Now you can start to measure too. I think we just got our next podcast topic. I think we want, I want to talk. I'm high on this, what Paul just said. I'm not really high, ladies and gentlemen, speakers (laughs) of the audience, but I'm high on this idea. Absolutely. Because one of the powers that I found as CISO in my last two programs, and I've had multiple team members comment on it, is the, the ability to say no. Yes. Oh my gosh! Wait, yes. you just said yes. <laughs> yes. Oh no, no, no! Actually, we we are going to do another podcast shortly <laughs> after not, this. Not that no, you can't do that. About. I mean, yeah. no, I I cannot do that. I've got priorities. I, I yeah. I've we've already prioritized. No, I I can't do that this year. Okay. But tell you well, what, we'll look at it next year. Let's save that because I think uh, literally that should be our out. next podcast yeah. in fifteen minutes if we do one. So Wait, let's we do are, that. We are all over the place with this episode. I love what, are we, that. what are we talking about? Met- we're talking about metrics originally. Oh, I, I thought we were talking about red hot chili peppers and how you like them. Sorry. Um, I think we're we- covering that too. We covered a lot. That was the primary focus of today, although we did we accidentally went into metrics. So, so let me put oh, you wow. on the spot. Give me an example of what's your worst metric. And if it is it could be cybersecurity, but just mm-hmm. explain it then so the audience can understand. Give me what oh, the, what, what metric you don't like. The worst metric I can that I've seen is um, vulnerabilities in an organization. And just that as the number. And that being presented to executives. A flat. There's 20,000 critical flat. vulnerabilities. Because it or doesn't not even, mean anything. Not even ranked. Not even ranked are they by over, Are they over 30 okay. days or are they over seven yeah. days um, for critical? Like, there's just so much lack of information that that, and I see that as a crutch for a lot of people. They'll use that as their, oh, well, this is what gets management's attention. This is what gets me funding. It's like, no, it doesn't. I mean, that just looks scary at first, but you're not really... You're not helping them understand where you need to focus time and money. You're not doing your job as a security person if that's the number you're presenting to senior management. So expand that a little bit with some of the context and give me co- how you would improve that metric or change or use a metric that you would like to see in that same sort sure. of context. Let me use the same one, right? So for that metric, we have X um, number of vulnerabilities. Okay. And what's a vulnerability again for our listeners that may have just graduated from the fourth grade? Let's let's keep it simple because vulnerabilities can fall into a couple different areas. But for this one, a vulnerability is a, a, a piece of software that requires a patch. So let's say patches, missing patches, just to make it easier. Um, so we have this many missing patches across the organization. Okay, that's a number. It's just data, right? And remember the Legos I talked about. That's just data. It's a mess of stuff. Let's start to organize it. So the first organization and the first sorting that I would do, and this takes time, right? This is not like the first metric I push out. This is, I. it goes over a period of time because it takes time to get this data, is to say, okay, how many are over the amount of days that we allow for a patch to be put in. So for instance, if you say critical patches need to be put in and let's just make a number five days. Okay, gotcha. So, because it takes time to put patches in, right? We all know that. So the next piece of information I want to understand is how many of those patches are outside of our our risk, our threshold that we want. The next thing I'd start to look at is, okay, prioritize those. Are they critical, high, medium, and how many of those are out of date? 
right? The next piece of information from there is, um, you know, are these externally facing or internally facing patches, right, that are missing? And so all this sort of information starts to um, get together and get um, arranged in a way that I can actually now visualize it and then tell a story and say, okay, right? And I know the, um, you know, the M&M defense kind of approach is, you know, a little outdated, but I'm saying for ease of use here, right? So we have five criticals that are over seven days um, externally facing. Okay, that's something that we want to focus time and attention on, and we may want to report up to management, right? I'm just making numbers up, right? Who knows mm -hmm. what the number is? But that's kind of how I want to see the information sorted over a period of months. Because I would expect the first time I come in, if if it's not a mature program, that I'm going to get that raw that raw info. And now I'm, I'm going to say, okay, now let's start to talk about how you how you filter it more and more and more until I get to the data that I want that I can start to tell a story. Yeah, um, that's a great explanation. I'm going to give my explanation too, which is going to fit with yours. I'm going to use a different analogy. I'm going to use the analogy of a vulnerability is something like if you drive, if you have a car and it has bald tires on it. To me, the bald tires are a vulnerability, meaning mm -hmm. standing by themselves, it's actually you can drive it, but there's a, a greater likelihood that you're going to spin out, you're going to get bad weather and rain, and something's going to happen, or you'll get a puncture because there's no tread left on the tire. So that's, hey, you got bald tires, Paul. That's a lack of context. Yeah, everybody thinks, oh, I got to go get some tires. But when you add context to things like Paul brought up one thing about age, well, the longer you drive on those bald tires, the more, the worse they're going to get, and the more likely you're increasing every day, chance over chance, that something wrong is going to hit that vulnerability. You're increasing your chances. So you really don't want it to be on there for a year or two years. You want to get it as soon as possible. Severity. He mentioned priority. Well, think if you have a rear wheel car. Maybe you want to swap out. You can't afford to do all of them. So you got to prioritize. Ooh, what do I want to do first? Oh, it's a rear wheel drive car. I make sure I get my rear wheels first because that's where the traction gets. And that's going to cause me to slip and slide more than others. That's a severity issue. Quality. You know, what are those tires protecting? If Paul's got a big baby on board, <laughs> hey, you know, your prioritization may go up through the roof a little bit more versus, ah, it's my teenage crap son who doesn't have a job and still living at home at 25. I'm joking about that. They're all no, high priority. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or it's taking a busload of children. We would want to prioritize that different. I'd be like, yeah, I need to get this fixed. When it's just me driving it, I may deprioritize that versus my wife and my children. So mm -hmm. that same concept of like the metric alone, hey, you got bald tires. Doesn't mean much. Remember, what's that story you're telling? What are you trying to protect? What's the severity? You start putting all those together and you get a good metric. And I swear this fits across not just cybersecurity, accounting and finance, human resources, whatever. Now, let me add to that, Jason, because that's a great analogy. Because there now you start to get into the story. And the story is, okay, are we, is this on our, our Mustang, our GT Mustang that we take out to the track on dry conditions? Ball tires are exactly what you want, right? That's a, you, that's the kind of yep. tire you want. There's also environmental factors that you can help to talk, tell the story. So say it's not a racing car, it's just a regular car and it's ball tires. Is it summertime? Is it winter? Is it wet? Right? Is it the rainy season? Because if it's rainy or snowy, now these environmental factors accelerate the priority um, and you know change the whole conversation that you should be having. Yep. And that's the story that goes with the data that you're providing. Even if your story is the analogy, like how Paul yeah. just talked about critical vulnerabilities, execs may gloss over there, but mm. they know cars. You might hit yeah. it better if that story is the analogy to your metric. So, hey, imagine this. We're driving a car. Mm. We're, we're dri Our company is on bald tires in the rain. We've got 20 screaming kids in the car, <laughs> and there's no race. We're just trying to get yeah. to the hospital for my wife is pregnant, so we got to get there fast. So you use that analogy, <laughs> and they start understanding the criticality. One famous one that I do for vulnerabilities is I, I actually say things like, you know, they go, well, how bad is the, are these vulnerabilities that we see? And using all the context Paul laid out, I'll say, well... This is probably bad enough that a 10th grader with an iPad can break into our shit. <laughs> and I'll say yep. that. And I'll say, oh, yep. this one, you know, you're looking at college degree. You got to have a couple years belt security. Oh, this one, that's like Korea. North Korea yeah. is going to get in, but it's going to take nation states. So you, you know, you give that analogy too. And that, but that is exactly why storytelling never present a metric without being able to tell a story behind it, in my opinion, no matter what your level and who you're uh, totally when you're reporting agree. it up or to your peers, have the story ready, explain the story. And get good at analogies um, because yes. analogies are I, – I, people actually groan when I break up my car analogies because I use a lot of car analogies <laughs> uh, because it makes sense, right? Most yeah. people understand how cars work and so forth. So, no, this is that, that's great points and um, 
yeah, I mean, it, again, it comes down in season one of our podcast. We talked about storytelling, right? And and now hopefully it's starting to come together because storytelling is so important for CISO or anybody in security because ju- it, just like life, just throwing a raw number out or raw data doesn't really seven do anything. Yeah, like seven what? Seven what? Is that bad? Seven is maids that good? Seven maids of milking? <laughs> Am I worried Wait, what about is, that? What is oh, seven with the Christmas song? Five. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Seven to- That's Darn a it. trivia question for whoever can answer uh, that via email. We speaking of questions, yes. speak great segue as we wrap up our great show about measurement and metrics. Uh, we are taking questions for season two. So far, the only one that, uh, that that we've had is from, I believe it's my wife that says, hey, how come you don't have me on the show? We might solve that. <laughs> please, we're taking questions this year. You can send them to fsidequestions at i70tech.com or go to our website, fsides.com, and it's right there on the homepage and submit some questions for us. Anything you might have of a speak, a previous speaker, a guest, or anything you just want to know or want us to talk about, we're happy to take them, please. That's going to be our final episode of the season. And if we don't get any questions, you'll get 30 minutes of me and Paul staring at each other. Yes, that should be fun. And by the way, that was a great measurement. We got one so far. And that's good. That's one. great. Right. That in one context. is great. And it's, it's, it's <laughs> high severity because it's my wife. Like, right? Touche. Yeah, you better answer that one. That one's going to show up on the show, I have a feeling. so okay. <laughs> I have a feeling, too. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Is the elephant in